Listen up, everybody. Your fantasy football drafts are coming. It's time to show your league what puny and pathetic trash bags they truly are. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the easiest way to annihilate them. Tiered rankings, full projections, sleepers, breakouts, it's got it all. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com and secure yours immediately. I said do it now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome into the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you are nasty. I'm your host today, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right with my best buddy, best friends, Jason Moore. Oh, man. It's Monday, Jason. It's Monday and we're here, which means it's August. This show is going to be hot. And I I mean that physically. 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 Yes. Our AC in Arizona, uh, of course, in the studio decided the morning of our first morning recording like it's like ah, i'm not gonna work i'm broken yeah Pew. that's <laughs> fun so yeah this show's gonna be fire gonna be hotter than the devil's butt crack up and you uh but uh we're here we're, we're not going Is away that a particularly it's a hot, very hot place for the very, devil very that's <laughs> most people's hottest place i think i was not aware it's my hottest place <laughs> good to know yeah. it is august 5th like jason said so the ac doesn't work I come in here, I walk in the room, and I go, it's like being punched in the face with a heat glove. And then and then the deucers are superhero men. They really are. Because they're like, hey, the AC's out. And I'm like, well, that means one thing. We call a it, professional, and they say, well, hold on, let us look at it. What do you mean, look at it? What do you, <laughs> what do you can't look at, a, at an AC and diagnose yeah. it? So they start breaking things down. They realize that this... That the power source for the air conditioner were like, oh, no, it's actually plugged into uh, power in the roof. I better run up on the roof and see if – and I'm like, well, first of all, you can do that? I didn't know. You, I can't get to the roof. What, I you, thought Did you take a chopper you, like Arnie? Did you – like, how do you get to the roof? I have no idea. Somehow he teleported onto the roof, saw that we had a bad circuit breaker – or a fuse, circuit. A fuse, a fuse. A fuse. A fuse. That's a fuse. Correct. And he said, oh, I can just run to Lowe's and get this. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, you cannot. And it's, that's what he did. And so it's not awful in here. We're surviving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's fixed, but it's starting with a warm box. But it's all right because yeah. the show's already going to be fire. And our fearless leader, Andrew Holloway, is out. He had a uh, – he's working on his tooth problem. Yeah, he had, a, I, he had some sort of He had a steel. surgery, so he's, he's, he's recovering. And we'll be back soon. Yeah, we're hoping he is back tomorrow, but that does it doesn't matter. <laughs> Jay Grizz, aka Jay Riz, the cardboard bear extraordinary. I'm Jay Grizz. I'm Jay Grizz. That's even stupider than I remember. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's sitting in the chair over there. He is holding it down. Welcome in, everyone, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast five times a week. You heard our our great friend at the beginning of the show, Arnie, re <laughs> recommending the Ultimate Draft Kit. If you are getting ready for your draft, which if you're listening to this podcast, you definitely are, the Ultimate Draft Kit is our flagship product. It is our baby, keeping this thing updated. There are a lot of updates going in right now as training camp news is unfolding. We're going to get into a lot of that, but check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. And a reminder... The 10th anniversary Megala show presented by Sleeper is live in L.A. Saturday, August 24th. We will be at the Palace Theater. We'll be cutting it up, doing a live recording of the podcast, a live AMA after that is done, giving away incredibly cool stuff from Pristine Auction. We're working with Fantasy Cares. This said, We're blowing it out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely blowing it out, and the tickets are going fast. BallersLive.com. Okay, that was a lot of intro. Jay, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Had a great night of sleep, and I'm excited to whoop you in the mock draft. We are doing a mock draft today, but before we get into that, we have a brand new segment 
to unleash upon the general public. Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. That's hot, Mike. Thank you. That's, that's good stuff. So with Ready to Roll every week, we are taking a deep dive. We're trying to go, you know, this is what we do. We, we, we make jokes and we have fun, but we're looking as deep as we can on metrics to make sure that the actual quality of the information on the show is good, is ahead of the curve, is going to help you Find the right players. You know, it's like you always have those drafts where it's like, oh, you. the key to the draft is just draft the best players. <laughs> yeah. It is. That is my secret sauce. Right. You just, you know, don't don't draft the busts. Um, and so we're, we're, we're looking each week at something deep, something unique. And so this week we took a look at red zone looks. Um, we're trying to adjust how we are looking at coverage in the NFL and see if we can find some takeaways, some actionable, like, hey, this might be really good for this player or that player. And so we've got some three three takeaway pieces uh, based upon adjusting our red zone look. So we've talked about how the NFL is becoming more and more and more zone. And th these are the numbers since 2019. The NFL was 58% zone in 2019, then 62% in 2020. Then 65%, then a very nice 69.5%, and last year over 70% of coverage was zone. And so you go, oh, well, we want we want zone beaners. Beaters? Beaner? Yeah, beaters. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. Yeah. Is it the red zone, the value of red zone targets is worth a lot more than a regular target. Okay, so if you, if you get a red zone target, it's worth 1.7 normal targets. If you're inside the 10... It's 2.1 targets, and if you're you're getting an end zone target, that's 2.6 targets. That's that's the value of fantasy points uh, per those targets. And inside the red zone last year, once you get inside the 20 and the defense collapse, it's 39% zone and 34% man. You see a lot more man, and you might you might be smart out there and go, that's not 100%, and that's true because once you get down to like you know. The two, the goal line look. Yeah, you the, you got a whole look, different. You got a sell out defense. That's, if you've ever played any sort of football game, you know that either like, hey, you get to the goal line and they 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 offer you that, and it's every man on your defense just just crush forward. That's the entire plan is don't let them run it up the middle. So what we're trying to find here are players that are good against both man and zone, but specifically once they get into the red zone, who are first read targets who excel at man coverage, right? A.J. Brown is one of them. Now, he's obviously super high in the drafts. So you've got to get lucky to, to, to have him. Right. I, I am, I, I'm all in on, on both A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, but he is eighth in man yards per route run, 14th against zone. The o Only five other wide receivers were top 15 at both. That's Tyreek, Nico, Nico Collins. My man. Dude, he's – I mean, I was really surprised to see him here. I know he had a great season, but, like, both zone and man, he's great. Brandon Ayuk, Justin Jefferson, and Mike Evans. Um, inside the red zone, he had 18 red zone targets, but here's the thing. 17 of those were first read targets. They are designing things for A.J. Brown in the red zone. By comparison, Devontae Smith only had three. So it's like, okay, that's, that's why he's in the first round and Devontae Smith is later. Two other targets, I think, in drafts. We just talked about this guy on the fire show. Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed had 17 red zone targets, which is pretty good, 18th among all wide receivers. That's not like, you know, a top five. But he was a rookie, and he missed games. 16 of his 17 targets were first read targets. When they get in the red zone, they are designing plays for him as a rookie. I... I, I think Andy is correct. I have started to shift. I was always the Christian Watson mm -hmm. guy. I'd rather take the value and have the upside of the athleticism. But the more that I've thought about how they use Jaden Reed uh, when they get in the in the red zone, I, I think he can repeat his touchdown prowess. And then the last one, a guy you've kind of stand for over the last uh, little while, the last right. year, Brandon Cooks, another surprising one. He lived off of touchdowns last year, and you might think, like, oh, well, he's old. But he was – first read on all 12 of his red zone targets so he's he's got the history of beating this kind of coverage and if they are designing plays for him in the red zone 
those touchdowns are far more repeatable. So the main takeaway here, red zone usage benefits players who excel both at man and zone uh, and, and focus on first read targets. So hopefully that helps pick a couple of guys. Maybe, maybe we'll get yeah. uh, some of these guys in the mock draft. That was Ready to Roll presented by Nissan. Find your path in the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek with a roof rack with up to 220-pound dynamic capacity. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Cargo and load capacity limited by weight and distribution. Always secure cargo. Heavy loading of the vehicle with cargo, especially on the roof, will affect the handling and stability of the vehicle. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Where's that money drop, boys? Do you have it? Do you have it? Money, there money, it is. Money, money, money. Dolphins wide receiver Tyree Kill. Whew. It was for, like when it all started blasting out. First, we had the cryptic tweet from Tyreek where you go. He, I believe he said, "I'm not going anywhere." You're like, "Well, yeah, I, I know you're not going anywhere because you're under contract for a couple more years, man." What are you talking about? And then it was announced it was a three year ninety or a, I think it was like a sixty million contract extension is what it was reported as. You're right. like, Whoa, yeah. more years for Tyreek? No. No, no, no. Just cash. Just guaranteed dollars. Straight cash, homie. Do you hear that, Dallas? Oh my gosh. Do I, you hear that? Every single time. Every single time that I see one of these wide receivers get money, I go, What does CD Lamb feel right now? What what is Dallas doing? Anger. Rage, fury. I mean, what? It, this, of course, I made this personal about CD Lamb, but congratulations to Tyreek Hill. He, oh, they just gave him more money. That's yeah. all they did. They just gave him a whole bunch of more money. Wide receiver from the Los Angeles Rams, Puka Nakua, is considered. <laughs> Jason bows his head. Oh, this is so, so upsetting. Puka Nakua is considered week to week after suffering a knee injury this weekend. Adam Schefter uh, had one source describing it as not serious. But that was compounded by a report, like I believe that was just before it, from ESPN's Jeremy Fowler saying the Rams' offense clearly runs through Cooper Cup. That was his observation after watching the team have a training camp practice. Where are we with the Rams' wide receivers now? Yeah, I mean, because uh, Puka is basically he Puka has taken on like the turn oh, in, for in a sure. twelve-team league. So like right at the end of the first, early second. Cooper Cup's going a couple rounds after that. Is that a giant mistake? It seems like right now it, it is probably the wrong gap. Um, Puka is a guy in in most of our mock drafts. We talk about like he's he's ranked there at, at wide receiver, I think appropriately, but it's too high compared to other running backs that are on the board. We almost never draft him there, uh, especially considering you can get the value on Cooper Cup several rounds later. And Cooper Cup could be the one in this offense. I still, I still like Puka's odds to beat Cooper Cup, but it it definitely doesn't seem like a multi round uh, gap. And then you you add in this knee injury, and it's like, okay, I'm happy that it's described as not serious, but it's week to week. It's going to keep him off the field for weeks, and it's a knee injury. I mean, that's that's not nothing. That's not good for the player. Um, you know, we see people all the time. You know, you're talking about, oh, this player gets off to a strong start when we're recapping their last season. They got injured in week three, and then it took them, you know, they, they missed two weeks when they came back. It took them like three or four weeks to get back to full strength. And obviously, I don't know the details of this knee injury, but I would really like to not have to excuse a slow start for Puka. Right. Especially is, since he's on my keeper team. <laughs> he, uh, I've talked about a lot where if I'm on the turn, like the Rams feel like the the picks, but I don't want to overload with the Rams. I just I don't personally want to do that with my first and second round pick. You're saying Kyron and Puka. yeah 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 Kyron Williams and Puka Nakua, and it always ends up being well I go with Kyron, and then I bypass Puka. And this was enough information for me. I have moved Puka down at least a couple spots, uh, in my in my projections and my rankings to the point where. Unless his ADP actually moves from this information, he's he's not going to end up on any of my teams. Yeah, it, this this really stinks. Also, uh, another one that stinks. Another guy, another wide receiver I love this year. Lad McConkey came up limping uh, in Saturday's practice. Did not practice on Sunday. Uh, you know, nothing is. I, I haven't seen any reports of 
it being serious, I, th- I think uh, Harbaugh said, you know, he's he's not con- not concerned. But I don't know. I don't. So I don't know if you saw this. the The Giants let their kind of draft board leak through the hard knocks. Okay. And they had color coding on certain players. Now we don't officially know what the color coding meant. Right. But there are guesses. Could and, be like, this guy's handsome. Right. Like yeah, green. Green is like those are the handsome guys. Yeah. Mark. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, really marketable. Um, but there was some red on Ooh, players. Red is not handsome. Red is not <laughs> handsome. The the assumption based on who the players were, and it really makes sense, uh, was injury related. Is what it seemed like. Um, and one of them that I was a little bit surprised to see a red marker on was Lad McConkey. I don't know of any. You know, I I don't know what the the the, the specific the injury revealed. is or what the medicals revealed to to the Giants. And again, I'm not 100% positive that red means injury. This is kind of hypothesis. But then, like, you come up limping here, um, and this is his second time kind of being a little injured. Um, it's like, come on, man. Yeah, it's brutal when rookies miss time at all during training camp. Let's just complete that, Jason. Another guy that you really like the talent. I like him as well. Panthers rookie wide receiver Xavier Leggett. He is considered day-to-day after undergoing an MRI on his injured foot. We are still waiting for more news, but someone leaving practice, immediately getting an MRI, we do not like that at all. So that's something to monitor. More Panthers news, Jason. Yeah. Man, it was a rough weekend it, for you, Jay. <laughs> I know, because it's all the guys I like. Jonathan Brooks. I've been saying, like, I running, don't want to – Rookie running back for the Panthers. I don't want to leave a draft without Jonathan Brooks because he's – he's you know, he doesn't cost you much. He's at the end of the draft. Um He's is now being reported. He will not play in preseason, and they are hopeful that he is ready for week three or week four. So this sounds like he will start the season on the pup. Now Mike is making a grimacing that is, face. That is brutal. That is brutal. I don't think it is completely and utterly unexpected. You hold on to those roots, brother. I mean, I'm I, out. You're okay. Okay, that's <laughs> I am out. That's that's totally fine. I will say. Um, historically not buying the injury dip is the right transaction to make um he'll, he'll fall a little bit in adp he might be a value in the 10th 11th round wherever he falls to um if you're starting with a player that obviously hope hopefully you're going to be able to put an ir spot if you've got it in your league right um but he's going to start slow for his career he's coming off the acl injury this was known from college um but i i believe he is the best running back in this year's draft class, and he was drafted as the first running back off the off the board. Mm-hmm. I believe the Panthers traded up to acquire him. I don't him. recall that. Um, and Canales will utilize him the way that he utilized uh, Rashad White. So I I still I still believe that if you if you have an IR spot and he drops into the double digit rounds, he's a stash I would want to make. If you have an IR spot, I'm okay with it. And a glimmer of hope there was Todd Gurley's rookie season, which he was recovering from his own knee injury. Different level of prospect drafted in the in the early mm-hmm. first round, but he missed two games. Week three, he played 27% of the snaps, and then after that, it was just off to the races, and he finished as the RB7. Yeah. So it's not impossible. It's just a the, the if we know for sure that he's not even going to be ready to play football until week four, and then there's the ramping up period, it's tough. It Chuba Hubbard, who's going right now as the running back forty three. We've we, we have we've talked about him a little bit in the off season when we had no idea exactly what the health of Jonathan Brooks was. Of Chuba Hubbard could be another one of these zero RB heroes who just supports your team for for a chunk of the season, even even if. Brooks comes back mm-hmm. and week six or whatever takes over the backfield. I get, you know, what four or five weeks of of a starting running back who was good last year to end the season for yeah. fantasy. If you if you look at week twelve on last year, Chuba Hubbard finished as the running back eleven, running back six, running back twenty four, running back eighteen, yeah. running back twenty. I mean, it was it was a good it was a good serviceable stretch, and that was for the putrid Panthers. Yeah, so keep. Uh, keep Chuba in mind when you're at the end there. And then Saints wide receiver Rashid Shahid, he has missed consecutive practices. Hamstring tightness. Oh, you don't want to see you don't want to see wide receiver hamstring issues before the year. The, those things they just stick around, man. 
Yeah, absolutely. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We will be right back with the mock draft. So I'm going to set it up before I hit the button. We are doing a mock draft on the sleeper platform. Mm -hmm. We are doing a 10-team full PPR, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, two flex. Jason, do you have your rankings prepared? Dude, I made them. I use them. <laughs> yes, yes, I got them. <laughs> I uh, made them, I use them, I win. That's right. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right, the draft has begun. Jason, you pulled the number three spot. I pulled the number nine spot, which yeah, that'll be a fun experiment. We're pretty close to the edges, and 10 team ends up looking very different when you're drafting from the edge as opposed to a the standard 12-team league. So, again, Jason got the third pick. Christian McCaffrey, CeeDee Lamb are the first two off the board. You're up, Jay. What are you doing? This is pretty easy for me. Um, you know, when, when when I look at my rankings, how they bear out, I would prefer to have Tyree Kill over C.D. Lamb. So if I was at the two spot, I would have taken Tyree Kill. You just look at how consistent he was last year, how unbelievably dominant the extra money that they gave him. I mean, put, put it this way. Who's paid? <laughs> who's paid? C.D. Lamb or Tyree money, Kill? Money, money, money. I, I love it. It's just like, hey, Tyreek. You're real good. Here's like, more why, money. How, how, just, just take this. Like you don't have to do that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know, you just, just take, just this, take, just take this, money. this money. If you look at uh, sleeper picks, that that's the like in season DFS game, and you look at the lines. Tyreek for week one is already at ninety eight and a half yards, which he <laughs> crossed that nine times last year, most in the NFL. So that that's the <laughs> consistency I'm looking for. So this is an easy pick for me. I'll take Tyreek. All right, Tyreek goes. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Puka Nakua, Brees Hall. So we had us a mighty fine run of wide receiver. Jason, this sucks. Jason shakes his head. Uh, this is, is that because I get Bijan? Yes, it's because you get Bijan. You shouldn't get Bijan at the nine. Bijan should not be that far. Oh, that's. I'm not even going to sit and elaborate on it. I am taking Bijan Robinson. Mc it's the Bijan minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, McCaffrey, Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, those are the running backs that I give the best probability to to finish as the overall number one. Getting him at the nine spot, I mean, that's 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 pretty hot. I'll take that. Yeah, so this is this is the full PPR uh, version, which is pushing wide receivers up. But obviously, when you're talking about Bijan, Christian McCaffrey, Brees, Gibbs, those are those are PPR machines as well. Um, so yes, that's a it's a great pick. Way to play so well. <laughs> You got to let the draft come to you sometimes, man. Uh, A.J. Brown finishes off the first round. Then Jameer Gibbs, the rookie sensation going into his sophomore year. Uh, Gibbs in a PPR is also. In a what? <laughs> in a PPR? PR, PR, PR. Did I say PR, PR? I don't know. I don't know. It sounded weird. You're just me. mad. I am a little mad. Yeah. You're just mad. Uh, so that puts me back on the board. Looking at the wide receivers who are available ADP-wise right now, at least on Sleeper, it's Garrett Wilson who – are are you buying into this anything that there's oh, the, the lovers quarrels going on with Aaron Rodgers? Have you seen them? I saw a video of them yelling at each other. So, I, but then I saw uh, Aaron Rodgers. He shut that down. Oh, really? Yeah. He said, "I was telling him how much I love him with passion." Uh, but then there was another one of like they just seem a little. The the thing is, is right they now. are they are both uh, elite alphas, and they are playing against the Jets defense every practice. Which is great for, you know what I mean? Like, the Jets' defense is way better than the Jets' offense. So they're going to have frustrations. They're going to look out of sync. But they're not always going to have to play against the Jets' defense. So it's Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison Jr., Devontae Adams, Drake London. These are the guys who are at the top of the wide receiver, uh, ADP-wise, anyways. And then I look at the running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, and Kyron Williams is there. There certainly is risk that they don't use him as much because they drafted Blake Corum who, in the third round who profiles as someone who can step in for Kyron when needed. But I think that Sean McVay, he loves himself a one running back rotation. So I'm going to start very high T 
Yeah. Very macho. Body hair everywhere. B. Yeah. John Robinson, Kyron Williams. I was uh I was really wanting Kyron to drop to me. I know different platforms have different uh, rankings. An underdog, I get him in the third oftentimes. Um I figured in a ten team he might make it back to the back of the second, and he might have had you not take him. So you got Bijan and Kyron. I love that start. Um I like it. Yeah. So after Kyron, Jonathan Taylor went, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, Marvin Harrison, Devontae Adams, another monster wide receiver run. We'll see how I feel about my wide receiver room with all of them flying off the board. But Jason, you're back up. Tyreek Hill and who? Tyreek Hill and whom? who? Who? Whom? whom? Tyreek. Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Is that who or whom? What should I have done? Tyreek Hill. I got a, I got a lot of blanks. I feel like it's whom. I would go with whom. Okay. Tyreek Hill and whom? Yeah. That's right. What is it? It sounds right. I I feel like when I don't know, I just I just go whom. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's whom is found. It's fancier. more sophisticated. And the thing is, the thing is, is if you say whom, yeah, no one's correcting you because no one uses whom. That's a great point. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, oh, he knows when to use whom, <laughs> Mister English over yeah. here. All right. Well, do you have a degree? Whom I shall take <laughs> is. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to play the game. I'm going to risk it. No risk it, no biscuit. I've got Tyreek Hill. Um, it's it's full PPR. I want Devon Achan. That's who I want. But I'm all going, Dolphins all the time. Yeah, I, I don't I don't care. I, if okay, there are there are certain players, certain and it's rare. You know, going back to where it was Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. It's like no problem. You could spend your first yeah, and second fair. round pick. And I think these are two of those type of players. Um, but I don't want to do my first and second. So I'm going to gamble and assume that I can get Devon H. In. You know, there's four picks between this pick and my next one. So I'm actually going to go with Saquon Barkley. Okay. Um, try to have two great running backs. Make with, it pay. Make it oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. So <laughs> Devon H. In fell to me uh, after I took Barkley. So I, I really like this start. If I've got such a stud at wide receiver in, in Tyreek if I'm spinning that early pick. I often do this like in reverse. Like if I was the Christian McCaffrey drafter, my next two picks are probably going to be wide receivers, and I kind of have that foundation piece. So Tyreek Hill will be, be my foundation. I will add his teammate, Devon Achan, with Saquon Barkley. So you take Devon Achan. Travis Kelsey went next to I was – I had a small dream that Travis Kelsey would make it all the way back, which – that means he went in front of Laporta. That'll be interesting to see how that if that starts shaking up over August. As That's the, how my rankings are. I, I would. You still have Kelsey up top. I still have Kelsey up for top. PPR. I would especially uh, like I'd rather have Kelsey. Laporta was low volume, really high uh, touchdown success. We'll see. Look, he was a rookie. Maybe he gets more uh, utilized in the offense, but they're a very high T team as well, where they're not. It's not going to be as many targets as Travis Kelsey will get. But Kelsey goes. Uh, at the 304, Josh Jacobs, then Sam oh, wow, Laporta. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just looking at the uh, Isaiah looking Pacheco at, and Nico Collins. What looking you got? at our rankings, I didn't realize you got? you've got you've got Kelsey at four. I do. You do. You've Whew. you've got yeah because I got I got my man up. You there. You got your man up top. Yeah, I do. You got T McB. You've got uh, Andrews and Laporta. So I mean, the thing is, is I I think there's there's definitely four. If you want to include Kincaid, like I do, there's five that I. You can make an argument for any of them finishing as the as the tight end one, which means any of them can finish as the tight end five. So, a uh, people ask us a lot. You know, what are the biggest differences for the ten team versus a twelve team? And it's your opportunity cost on taking a onesie position. It moves down because you have you know far fewer players actually selected, and the impact that a dominant quarterback like Josh Allen at the three hundred two, no problem. Yeah, that, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. Travis Kelsey 304 in a PPR. Yeah, absolutely. Because everyone's team in a 10 teamer on paper, at least when the season starts, you go, know, oh man, look at that team. And then you look over the oh, look at that team. Oh, look at that team. Everybody's team is yeah. is pretty fire. But so you the, gotta find the small margins where you can make a difference. And so the small margins where you make a difference, um, it, it's specifically like, you know, we we like we like Joe Burrow. I like Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is higher to me than his average draft position and rankings. But he is not a difference maker within the position the way that a Josh Allen or Hurts or maybe Mahomes, if you know, people that can actually gap themselves like a Christian McCaffrey or a Tyreek right. Hill, where it's like 
the difference between having the the elitist versus the fifth or sixth best that makes a huge difference in a ten teamer. So I'm taking Trey McBride. Uh, I am taking him over uh, Mark Andrews just because I'm going to place my to place my chips, so to speak, on that Trey McBride will be a PPR machine. We got to get those touchdowns up, absolutely. But with the return of Kyler Murray, I think that that's going to happen then. Derrick Henry went off the board at 310. Mike Evans at the 401. I am back on the clock. Bijan Robinson, Kyron Williams, Trey McBride. And that was the spot I, you know, I would really hope that Nico drops to me. He went right in front of my I, Trey McBride pick. I was pick. thrilled to see him go right right ahead of you. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. I saw Nico, and then you were yeah. on the clock, and I was like, yes. It would have been an easy pick for me uh, if Nico oh, – over Trey McBride, too, as well. And then I'm going to reach down the ADP a little bit. I'm going to take Jalen Waddell. Uh, I have spoke very kindly of him. I think that he is a true wide receiver uh, one, like a back end. Tyree Kill is still the guy, but I think that we could see a season – Far more like two years ago for Jalen Waddell when he was healthier and he finished as a top 10 guy. So to get what I look at as a top 10 player as my fourth pick here, and I have a difference maker at the tight end position, I like that start. DJ Morris, Stephon Diggs, whoo, okay, Jalen Hurts, Debo Samuel, Patrick Mahomes. So Hurts and Mahomes are gone. Yeah, it was who I, I was targeting either one of those guys. So are you even considering a quarterback at this spot? I am considering a quarterback. Not at this spot. I am considering. Are you gonna? You're gonna. You're gonna play the game again. I'm gonna play the game, but this time I'm, I'm upgrading the game. Stupid games win stupid prizes, Jay. This, this time, I, well, I'm going. I'm going for a an exponential prize. I want a stack, and we just talked about this in a ten teamer. I'm willing to take the onesie positions a little bit earlier, including maybe even two of them. Mark Andrews is my tight end, oh, too. Oh, okay. Mark Andrews is my tight end, too. If I can grab Mark Andrews Ooh. here in the fourth, and if Lamar f falls to me, there's only – Team 1 doesn't have a quarterback yet. But that's it. So, like, I got to play that game. Come so on. You're, which one are you going first? I'm going Mark Andrews first. Okay. Um, oh, man. Gosh. <laughs> oh, that's tough because <laughs> ADP-wise, Mark Andrews has a better shot at getting back to me. Lamar Jackson is on this platform – definitely the highest but neither team one or team two has a tight end so they've so there's four picks that they could take mark andrews whereas there's really only like team one is the only team oh man which way do i get this boy? is a conundrum all right I, I i am gonna go andrews and the reason why is because if i lose out on lamar i i'm i'm fine with that i, I there are other quarterbacks i like as well oh yes that's <laughs> not <laughs> You must be so disappointed. I, I am. I am. You chucked a big game. I'll, I'll be fine. No, you're not. You're sad. And none of them took tight end. <laughs> none of them took a tight end. At all the four picks, they could have used any of the four picks. Yes. Granted, I had. To, if Mark Andrews was on the board, they, they might have Ooh. taken a tight end. All right. Well, that sucks. I don't have my quarterback yet. Um, I would be targeting, uh, for, you know, now. I'm looking at Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, players like that. You've got two picks before me, I, but man, I don't think I want to reach down that far. Um, I've got one wide receiver. I'm going to. So your team is Tyreek Hill, Saquon Barkley, Devon H. and Mark Andrews. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and follow the the news and the health. Um, okay. And I'm going to uh, instead of instead of Puka at the one two turn in the fifth round, I will take now. Cooper Cup, okay, as my wide receiver over DK. I I did. I took him over DK. I we can't forget how great and dominant Cooper Cup was. the The fact that you know when you look at the games when Cooper Cup and and Puka played together, the red zone utilization. I mean that Cooper Cup is where they look, and so to get him in the fifth round, I'm 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 pretty darn happy with that I would have I would have liked uh Metcalf I would have liked Devontae Smith there's a lot of good options there but I honestly I haven't had Cooper Cup I don't think in any draft this year all right so you went Cooper Cup uh Cooper Cup then it was DK Metcalf immediately after James Cook Devonta Smith went at 506 Dalton Kincaid and CJ Stroud went at the 508 absolutely beautiful it's a 10 teamer so I'm I'm willing to put this experiment Henceforth, Anthony Richardson will be joining my squad. Hopefully, I have two 
true dominators at the onesie position, and I don't have to think about them for the entire season except for one week when it is their bye, and I just have to fill it in. We'll see. I only have the one wide receiver. We'll see if I end up liking this team at the end or not. Joe Mixon went afterwards. Zay Flowers was the 601. I am back on the clock. It's kind of nice not having to – now I don't even have to think about QB or mm -hmm. or tight end. I mean, this is a little, little mental stress that's gone for the rest of the draft. And the other guy who I would have selected – let me just – let me check my rankings here. Uh, man. So I'm looking at Tank Dell. I didn't get my – I didn't get my precious Nico Collins, and I'm just making sure I do have Tank Dell that much further ahead of George Pickens. And I do, so I will take Tank Dell. Jay, look at this squad. Yeah, no. Look it's, at this squad. It's it's, it's coming together rather nicely. Um, it's nowhere near as good as my team, but it I'm still proud of you. What if I offered you to change teams with me right now? Oh, I would definitely You would, you would do that. No, I would you not. Would. No way. Really? No way. My team's way better. You are a you are full of baloney. I am not full of baloney. All right. Uh, Kyle Pitts, Keenan Allen, Kenneth Walker, Amari Cooper, Alvin Kamara. Ooh, Kamara did not make it to you. Uh, Kamara did not make it to me, but Kyler did. Now, both the teams, uh, Team 1 and Team 2 that are on the turn, they have their quarterbacks. So I don't need to take Kyler here. I'm going to get Kyler. That's what you think. <laughs> yeah, I guess computers can be crazy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll play the game and get Kyler in the seventh round, which, which I like, which means right now I can go take a look at either running back or wide receiver. Um, the, the, the running backs on the board are got some guys we like, like James Connor. I still think that there is, um, a huge upside in David Montgomery should an injury befall, uh, Jameer Gibbs. Either one of those guys has like that, that league winning upside built into them. Um, and then a wide receiver, uh, George Pickens is pretty high. I know you, you guys have, you guys have talked him up. I don't know why I you can't, still, you're still I not just, in? I, but the logic says it should work. He was really good last year. I'll say, I don't like what's going on with all this quarterback chatter out of Pittsburgh. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to be Justin Fields. Uh, I it just, I don't like that there's even questions i mean maybe these are completely manufactured media questions but like russ came into camp hurt justin fields is we had a report that he's having a great camp it was this was a quarterback decision that was easy it's going to be russell wilson starting for the pittsburgh steelers so to have any of that floating around i mean justin fields took dj Moore to a, a sensational fantasy year uh last year so it's not impossible. I'm just saying of the, you know, it's the old, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Right. It, it just, I don't like those vibes. For sure. Um, I don't either, which is why I'm going to take T. Higgins. Uh, T. Okay. Higgins is highest in my rankings. I, I feel like there are a trifecta of values based upon the same trifecta of disappointments last year. And those would be, the, last year it was like around the second round, I think it was mid to late second round, you had... T. Higgins, Jalen Waddle, and Devontae Smith. The yeah. twos for their teams yep. were in the in were twos in fantasy. And all three and number twos for your team. Yeah, and all three kind of, yeah, exactly exactly. <laughs> took took kind of took a dump. But I think that their value has fallen too far. Like how you are high on higher on Waddle than than most. Um I'm higher on T. Higgins. I feel like people yeah. have forgotten the fantasy value that he can provide when he's got a healthy Joe Burrow, and when he's healthy, right now he's healthy. He's got a healthy Joe Burrow. Uh, I think T. Higgins is in for for a, a fantastic season. To get him, you know, this far into a draft, I there's there's upside. So T. Higgins to Jason's team, George Pickens, and then Aaron Jones rounds out the sixth. We will be right back with Jason's seventh round pick. I'm going to get the guy that you hope you're getting in Anthony Richardson. Okay, what, what, before you make your pick, because George Kittle opened up the seventh round. Does that – it brings – like, I love Trey McBride. I think he has uh, number one overall upside. But George Kittle here in the seventh versus I took Trey McBride at the 309, that type of a gap feels value-wise like Team 1 got an absolute steal here. So I have – 
spoke many times about wanting one of the top five tight ends. The top five being Laporta, Kelsey, Andrews, McBride, and Kincaid. And every time that I say that, it, there's a little voice in the back of my head that goes, "Hey, hey, that, what about what about George Kittle? It's, it's me, George." Um, George Kittle is is you know, he is so unbelievably freaking awesome to have on your roster when it's a Kittle game, right? And and those games are are real. Like if you watch the you know wide receiver the series um, on Netflix. You it followed Kittle and, and Debo uh, along with others, and it's just like they design game plans for players. And so that's why sometimes he just disappears, and you'll get a two fantasy points on your roster because it's just like that's not where, where they were trying to exploit it. But when they are in on George Kittle, and he's such a core piece of this team, like he is the – I feel like he's the the energy of this offense um, – He's, you know, he can he can do things that no one else in the league can do, including Kelsey now at this point. And team number one, their th uh, third round pick was Brandon Ayuk. Now, obviously, we're doing a mock draft, and you know, ADP is factoring a lot into this. Do you have what's your level of comfort of having either Debo or Brandon Ayuk, and then taking George Kittle? Is that a team you're willing to double dip on? George Kittle, top five in five of the last six seasons no I would not want to double dip now this is going to work out excellently if Ayuk gets traded <laughs> um right uh, because if Ayuk gets traded George Kittle absolutely needs to you know be be considered in the 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 top tight ends would you move him over Kincaid yeah if if okay. Ayuk is traded I would move Kittle up over Kincaid um but yeah I I, I I'm okay with I like Team One in general, but if I had Ayuk, I probably wouldn't grab Kittle personally. All right. Christian Kirk was next, and then Jason, you're up. Yep. Uh, I will take Kyler Murray here as planned. And again, you know, you, you Anthony Richardson versus Kyler Murray is so yeah, funny because it's it is. Anthony Richardson's usually in the fifth round. Kyler, I'm getting in the seventh round, and you're just hoping that Anthony Richardson can become what Kyler has always been could when be he's boat. on the field. It could be a boat. So Kyler's Kyler's value is. I, I mean, Foot Clan. Let's just keep him. Keep him where he is. He's just so perfect for fantasy right now in the seventh round. An easy layup of a pick. Don't don't overdraft Kyler. Not until it's your actual draft, and then and then grab him. If I mean, I had Trey McBride. I had expected that Kyler Murray would have been my quarterback. Like I in that run there, uh, where you gambled, Lamar would make it back. I figured Richardson would get taken in that in that round, and then I would I would just take. Kyler Murray at the 602. Right. So yeah, I I mean in full agreement of Kyler and having a Trey McBride Kyler stack. That's I think that's going to be pretty fun. All right. Kyler went Jordan Addison, DeAndre Swift, Terry McLaurin, Joe Burrow, James Connor. Just a, a, a real quick Terry McLaurin conversation. He's in the seventh. I mean he Terry all he feels like he's that guy we know who he is, which is a in my opinion, a better wide receiver than he puts out for fantasy football. And, you know, it. we have been kind of yellow-green with him where it's his rookie year, 28th, then he was up to 21st, 25th, 14th, back down to 28th. Are we – but I mean, he's basically been a 1,000-yard guy every year of his career. Are we undervaluing the potential of Terry – here, not to jump, not to make a, be a top twelve guy because we talked about rookie quarterbacks lacking touchdowns, but are we undervaluing Terry here? I don't think so. I, I think he's valued exactly where he should be. Um, there's still a lot of valuable players on the board, um, people that are, are going to be wide receiver twos that you can draft right now, and that's basically what he is. He he does lack the elite upside to do something really really special. You know, when when you're when you're drafting wide receivers around this range. Um, you go, okay, Christian Kirk was a wide receiver one a couple years ago. Zay Flowers, you know, is going into year two as the number one. There, There's unknown upside. With Terry McLaurin, there is known, not upside. and But there's also known, not downside. He's just, he's a safe mid pick. So he's fine in the mid rounds if, if you are looking to just add some quality depth. Looking at ADP, because I am on the clock, my team is B. John Robinson, Kyron Williams, Trey McBride, Jalen Waddle, Anthony Richardson, Tank Dell. So I am 
in fact, perfectly balanced somehow at this point in the draft with my two onesies. At ADP for wide receivers, Roma Dunze, who was my ice player uh, just a couple weeks ago, or not a week, a couple weeks ago. Goodness, that was last week. Yeah. <sighs> Time warping. Rasheed Rice, which, hey, NFL, it's August. Can we get an announcement? Like, can we know what's going on here with the legal uh, troubles, the off the field troubles of Rasheed Rice? I, I Is think, he going to get a suspension? Like, what's going on here? I think we would probably know about it if it was going to be week one. Now, this can come at any time. It, yeah, they can drop it right in the middle of the year. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be this looming over him. Um, but it does seem more likely that it's not going to start the season than ever before. I mean, so where, every, where are you at then with his ADP? Let, I've got him marked right now as the top of my queue. Okay. Uh, th I, I think that um, there's a good enough chance he's not suspended this season uh, to, to take the gamble because this is a player who was awesome down the stretch as a rookie with Patrick Mahomes. And I know that they brought in Hollywood, they brought in Xavier Worthy, uh, but he is he is the wide receiver one for this team, and if you're getting him in the seventh eighth round, yeah, I I I'm I'm willing to take that gamble personally. It, I think that's where I am now. It, it's we're we're early August, but let's say we get to the end of August and the ADP is holding for Rice, and we still haven't heard anything. It yeah at, I, at some point it becomes worth the risk I think it becomes a target not even yeah I mean it's it's not even like I'm willing to take that risk on it's I want to take that risk on because the upside for Rushy Rice is really really high and this is it's it's a really blah part of the draft for me because it's Rome Rashi Rice Jaden Reed which you you and Andy really like him Chris Godwin is he's somewhat interesting than the Chiefs rookie Xavier Worthy Calvin Ridley uh Big time. Andy is big time into Calvin Ridley, and then the running backs are you know Montgomery, Ramondre, Najee, Tony Pollard, Zamir White. So it's it's a weird part of the draft for me. So I'm between David Montgomery or taking the chance on Rasheed Rice. Rasheed Rice, just just looking at this, I wanted to pull this okay, yeah, up. Yeah, give it to me. Uh, from week twelve on, um, which you know is the last what seven seven games of his rookie season, he was the wide receiver nine in fantasy points, averaging 14.9 fantasy points per game over that final stretch was obviously uh, important in the playoffs as well. So as a rookie coming into his second year, and everything from camps have been like he's he is the wide receiver one for right, this okay. team. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all about it. I think in the fact that it's a 10-team league and I feel like I can get away with it like maybe you know take a little bit more risk it's easier to replace a wide receiver here because of the the waiver wire and everything I'm gonna go to Rasheed Rice Roma Dunze goes next Dak Prescott is the 801 I'm back on the clock there was two guys who I was considering yeah so you, I'll just take the second guy David the, Montgomery the, those were the two highest guys in my queue that I want I wanted David Montgomery if and I Rasheed Rice trade teams with you right now. absolutely not just because you get later guy I could have drafted them last round I chose not to um, the guy that I would take here, if my team was not Tyreek Hill and Devon Achen, <laughs> would be Raheem Mostert. Uh, but I that's 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 too much. That's too much tuna. Um, <laughs> can't, sir, sir. There's the, the it's Dolphins safe now. Oh yeah. Okay. I well, mean, it better be. I love Dolphins. That was like that was a. Big, do you guys remember that? That was like a big deal in what the '90s or something. All the. The, the tuna fishing, they were getting in big trouble because they were scooping up dolphins? That was rude. Yeah. So you leave them alone. I need a running back. However, I had set up a queue of a lot of players um, that, that I liked. I hope it's empty. R it, it is empty but one. So wow. th this pick will be pretty easy. I, I had uh, Rushy Rice. I had David Montgomery. I had Ramondre Stevenson. Some players in there that I really liked. The last one that was in there is Jaden Reed. He dropped to me, and at this point, I'm not going to pass him even just because, you know, you like I I would prefer to have a running back over a wide receiver at this spot, but I'm not going to reach for a lower tiered running back over a really high quality. You know, we talked about it in the ready to roll. Jaden Reed has a very good easy pathway forward, and you know what really kind of sparked my imagination on Jaden Reed was when Andy brought up the other day comparing him to Tank Dell. 
who I'm madly in love with. I would I would have taken Tank Dell rounds ago. And they I did. They're <laughs> right. Yes. But the thing is is who's the better offense? Is it Houston or is it Green Bay? I it's don't a, know. It's a fair question. It's a fair question, but they're in the same tier of offense. And you go, okay, Tank Dell, is he is he the number one target? He could be, but right now I, I think you probably don't have him as the number one target. It's just as likely that Jaden Reed is. Um, who's used more in the red zone? I mean, they're they're very comparable sure, to each yeah. other. It's, and, it, 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 which is the what we've been talking about of the value of C.J. Stroud versus the value of Jordan Love. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that like C.J. Stroud – Went at the five oh eight. Is the Jordan Love is still available here in the eighth round. And to me, really it's a who's gonna finish higher? CJ Stroud or Jordan Love? And I like I don't have confidence to say one way or the other. Yeah. I think they're in the same tier. It it oh dang gun it. <laughs> <laughs> you took Jaden Reed, Chris Godwin, DeAndre Hopkins, Javante Williams. Wait, was the what was the it side? was Javante Williams? Javante, okay, yeah, I'm I'm running out of running backs I like here, and then Deontay Johnson. Um, and so I'm 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 gonna just go ugly and nasty here. Well, before you do it, I because I was gonna like Javante was who I was kind of locking in on here. Of are we <laughs> we are in a time warp with Javante Williams of starting the off season being really like staunch in our then I'm talking about last year Javante Williams is coming off of the injury be careful be careful because all the reports at a camp should he be they're gonna they're gonna be flowery and pillowy soft of Javante Williams is back and it's we know that guys can like some Adrian Peterson superhuman but Javante Williams we were really really scared about him and then the, all the training camp the hype and the drum beat got so loud that we, I think all three of us were kind of like, okay, maybe we're wrong. Maybe Javante Williams can do it. We were not wrong. And now that I feel like we're kind of repeating that cycle of off Javante, I, I, Jaleel McLaughlin, uh, Estime, these other guys that are on the team, well, what's going to happen? And uh, they're swaying me again. And am I falling? You're going back into I, yeah, Javante. I, I'm being more and more swayed that as the training camp stuff comes out, that Javante Williams is the guy. The beat reporters are saying, uh, Audrick Estime looks very good in training camp. But Javante is still the RB1. And he's in the ninth round. This is a Sean Payton RB1 potential who caught a ton of passes last year. He was just a very inefficient player returning from his knee injury. He said, another year back. Where where are you at in the cycle of Javante Williams? I am pretty much where you are, where I find myself being slightly more open. We 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 had a plan early this offseason. We talked about it with Javante, which is either there's only there's only two cases for him. Either he is fully recovered from the injury and he's back to being an awesome star, or he's never going to be an awesome star. His his knee injury affected him to where he's just a guy, and maybe he will still be the volume-based player that he was last year. He got a lot of work, but he still wasn't good for fantasy. And so that all is going to be indicative of camp reports. It's one of the only players that I'm like actively waiting to hear the rosy, flowery stuff, but it's got to be rosier than it's been. I mean, there's, okay. been, there's been comments lately of a couple weeks ago of like, is he on the roster bubble? That's not the comments of saying, whoa, he's back. Now the last thing I heard was Peyton, uh, Sean Payton talking about how he's lost weight and is looking good in camp. So I, I'm going to keep waiting, but I want to hear profuse. I want to hear wow, he looks unbelievable because if you, he because he should be looking unbelievable if he's back to health. Uh, so that that's my stance on him. So I need a running back here, and I'm going to do something very very gross. But this is how. This is where you draft this player because personally, I can't take Raheem Mostert, who I would love to have here. Three Dolphins too much. Nick Chubb, I'm out on. Three Ch Dolphins <laughs> too much. Three darts. <laughs> um, Zach Moss is interesting here, uh, but I feel like I need I need a solid guy. Sometimes I'm going to swing for the fence. I, I would take Jonathan Brooks, but I've only got Saquon and Devon A. Chan right now. So I want a solid guarantee. I don't know about Eckler. I don't know about 
um, Chubb and, and all these other guys. But I do know that there is a guy who, when he got the opportunity from Week 10 on last year, was the running back nine in half PPR fantasy points, who is now the only starter. He's the only decent guy on his team. They're talking about sixth-round rookies oh, run, running as man. number two. I, you know where I'm going, right? I, I don't know where Nasty is on this I, I got you. I got you. I'm going to take him. You have to. It's Nasty. But I'm going to take Devin Singletary. Okay. This is where, like, usually at the end of drafts, I'm bypassing Devin Singletary because he's, he's an RB2 without massive upside. But that's what I'm looking for right now, roster construction wise, and there is a place for him here. I I definitely believe he will be a top twenty four running back this season. You took Devin Singletary. It's nasty, but I get it absolutely. Xavier Worthy, Jordan Love, then Calvin Ridley, which I am realizing that we hadn't yet talked about the Hopkins knee injury, uh, just of of the timing of of when that happened. Obviously, it has not affected his ADP just yet. But DeAndre Hopkins suffered a knee injury that they said he's going to miss several weeks uh, to the point of we got an update, I think, yesterday that said he's not going to have to have surgery. But that's the type of injury that we're talking about now with DeAndre Hopkins, who is an older wide receiver, 30, 32? Uh, yes, 32. So Calvin Ridley does have more appeal. Uh, like I still have – my Will Levis concerns, but Cal getting Calvin Ridley here in the ninth, he'll certainly move up. So it, that's just that's something to pay attention to. Yeah, I mean, obviously with Andy not on the show, this is the first time ever that Calvin Ridley has gone drafted by a computer because usually <laughs> right. Andy will grab him a round or two ahead of ADP. He is uh, very all in on Calvin Ridley. So Jason, just real quick, your team is Tyreek, Saquon, Achan, Mark Andrews, Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, Kyler Murray, Jaden Reed, and nasty, nasty Devin Singletary. I have Bijan Robinson, Kyron Williams, Trey McBride, Jalen Waddle, Anthony Richardson, Tank Dell, Rasheed Rice, and David Montgomery. Looking at the wide receivers, you know this is this is the rookie place. This is where rookie wide receivers are supposed to go in drafts. Uh, but Ladd is there, Keon Coleman, Brian Thomas, and then at the running back position, you know Moss. You, you you brought him up. He's still there. That the Zach Moss Chase Brown camp battle. You need to keep watching that because it it seems to be tightening. Jalen Warren, uh, Trey Benson is. I think Trey Benson should not be here. I think Trey Benson should not be this high in ADP. He is being overdrafted. At least when you balance that with the way that the Arizona Cardinals coaches I, are talking about I it. I thought you were saying he shouldn't still be available to no, be drafted no, here, no. and I was shocked. I'm like. No, we're, it's the we're, opposite. Yeah, we're we're local here. We know that right now the camp reports aren't glowing on Trey Benson. I think this is you know the, the my my far and away like prospect draft grade wise pre draft he was my number one running back. Uh, I believe yours as well. Yeah. So it's been very disappointing to hear that he's in a camp battle with Demarcado and uh, Michael you know, and Michael Carter. Like he should have fully established himself as the running back too. So I'm taking Christian Watson here. I'll I'll take my swing to find the the Packers wide receiver one, and just cross my fingers and hope. Brock Bowers went at the end of the ninth. Then Hollywood Brown. I am back. So this is where we're we're trying to find some real upside. Uh, I have three running backs. I have four wide receivers. The running backs who are I mean, I really want one of these rookie wide receivers. Lad, yeah. you gonna take my lad? It would be really funny if I did that. You think I should do that? I think you should not do that. <laughs> Why don't you just tell me who you're going to take? Um, Man. Okay, so between McConkie, Keon, Coleman, Brian Thomas. I mean, you can I'm make gonna, cases I'm gonna for take all JSN. of them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I love that. I just, it. We got to – sometimes you got to remember just how good a player can be despite – uh, let's call it human error up in Seattle last year. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of human error with the way that they use JSM with the new coaching staff. We are, we're hopeful that that will bounce around. I'm going to take, so, I mean, JSN, yeah, 52% of snaps for the first month, which he was recovering from the wrist injury. So he was one of those rookies where he lost, a, he lost time to the injury and it kind of deletes your rookie year. It takes... A special circumstance for that to happen, and then you really break out. So I still believe in in Jackson Smith and Jigba, the player. 
Uh, I do too, completely. Uh, I believe that he was used in buffoonish ways, and I'm very excited about Grub's system. So we're, we're, in, we're in sync there. Lad when, McConkey, Nick Chubb, Zach Moss, Keon Coleman, Brian Thomas. When I look at that, you, this is the tier of like the questionable guys who all could break out and have awesome seasons. JSN, Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman, Brian Thomas, and there's one more to me. And so I'm going to take that player, and Andy is in on this play. I know you're out, but it's Jamison Williams who – Oh, I'm, I'm not out in the 10th. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, no one you, – you're not really, you know – Yeah, you're, you're not you're out just, on anybody in you're the just, 10th. You're just swinging for fences here, and, and Jamison Williams, his camp reports have been great. His opportunity, he should be the number two target. Like, he really should. He should overtake Sam Laporta as the number two target in this offense. I don't know that he will, but in the 10th round, you have the – the option. This was a what was he like the number twelve pick in the NFL draft? He was it was very high, the, yes. Very, very high. Um Kyle vet me on that. Um twelve. He, okay, he was twelve. You got it. So uh yeah, I'll take Jamison Williams there. And then the nice thing is after I took Jamison Williams, a little tight end run of David Njoku, TJ Hawkinson, uh Fergalicious, and Brock Purdy. So I, I still have all the running backs and wide receivers left. And there is a running back that I like. In fact, there's two running backs I like. Let's talk about these two guys because they're in the same tier. They're in the same situation. I think both are really talented human beings as running backs, like really good running back. Okay, so just a quick recap. You got Hill, Barkley, H.E.N. Andrews, Cup, Higgins, Kyler, Jane Reed, Devin Singletary, Jamison Williams. And you're looking at two I'm running looking backs. I'm looking at two running backs, Jalen Warren. And Tajay Spears. Okay. The, the you know, they're both perceived the, backups. They're both the perceived backups. Um, Jalen Warren has proven that he can be really, really good. When given the opportunity, he's uh he's phenomenal. They've improved their offensive line. Now they've got Arthur Smith there that can help the run game but also frustrate uh you know, utilization. And then you've got Tajay Spears, who is always you know, around Tennessee, he is just completely talked about as they have two starters. You know, right now it's being drafted like Tony Pollard is the starter and Tajay is the backup. That is not how I believe they will be deployed. Maybe Tony Pollard will be the starter and get the first handoff over Tajay, but I think they are going to be interchangeable 50-50 backs. Uh, so who would you draft? Which one of those guys gets you more excited? Uh, man, I think I – think it's a really tough call. I think I'm going to go Jalen Warren right there, though. All right. I'm just going to listen to you here. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to trick. I just I think that I would go Jalen Warren. Right. I'll take Jalen Warren Um, you know, in the 11th round as my running back four. I, I like that. All right. Jalen Warren, Austin Eckler, Trey Benson, Caleb Williams, Dallas Goddard, the Dr. Dalton Schultz. Uh, this pick is pretty easy for me. It's Blake Corum. Hmm. I am taking the backup to Kyron Williams because – I truly believe that if Kyron Williams goes down, then Blake just he goes right in and he gives me maybe not a hundred percent of Kyron. Hope so. Yeah. But at, at least a good a good percentage of what Kyron can give. You've talked about that a lot. That if you it's and, one of the rare cases over the years where if you draft a certain player, you are also drafting their backup. So that that that's the yeah, that's the one backup I'll take. Brian Robinson, Gus Edwards, and then to take for my final pick. So wide receivers, is there anybody with actual upside? Curtis Samuel, maybe he ends up the number one wide receiver for Buffalo. Khalil Shakir is being talked about a lot as well from Buffalo. I mean, Josh Palmer would have been really interesting here had the, the Justin Herbert foot issues not appeared. So over at running back, like Jerome Ford is there. I think Jerome Ford is a great uh first chunk of the season while we wait for Nick Chubb to return I think that Jerome Ford is a good player for that but but the the drum beat of Chase Brown is is starting to get to a point where you I think we have to listen to it. oh so I'm come on take <laughs> Jared Goff Tua Romeo Dobbs Justin Herbert and Tajay Spears Ta right before Jay I, I, I didn't even think about Tajay making it back to me because he was he was very high in ADP and then it was just as the picks kept going I was like oh wait Maybe Tajay will come all the way back, and then I can uh, not have to choose between him and Warren, but one pick before me. Okay, so, um, yeah, it, it went uh, after your pick, Goff, Tua, yep. Dobbs, Herbert, Spears, and now I'm looking at 
Zico Elliott is there. Yep. Um, at wide receiver, Curtis Samuel, I think, will be involved. You've got rookies like uh, Adonai Mitchell. Uh, Which the, the 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 buzz, at least thus far, in Adonai has been. Yeah. Jason, tell me my Jason's tell me how the buzz has been smirking and you can hear the smile in his voice it, it has not been great the the substance has act has been more focused on alec pierce being locked in as the wide receiver too yeah if you can't overtake alec pierce whew. alec pierce is in excellent cardiovascular he's, shape he's in great shape um okay so uh, looking at my roster i've got uh Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, Jaden Reed, uh, uh, um, and uh, Williams. So let's see here. I, I think, man, is it? I th I think I'm gonna do it. Yes, it feels bad. Oh, gross. It feels. It, yes, I'm gonna take Zeke. <laughs> uh, Zeke and Singletary, yes. man. I got, I got I got some old guys, but I've got I've got A. Chan up there when uh he's he's gonna be scoring me. Overall running back number one points when he's healthy. All right, go ahead. Read your team off, Jay. All right, my team at wide receiver, Tyree Kill, Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, Jaden Reed, and Jamal Williams, or J Jameson Williams. Uh, I've got Saquon Barkley, Devon A. Chan, Devin Singletary, Jalen Warren, and Ezekiel Elliott. And at my onesies, Mark Andrews and Kyler Murray. At running back, I have B. John, Kyron Williams, David Montgomery, Blake Corum, and Chase Brown. Wide receivers are Jalen Waddle, Tank Dell, Rasheed Rice, Christian Watson, and JSN. And then my onesies are anchored by Trey McBride and Anthony Richardson. Feel good about that team? I feel pretty good. I think that I've got a I was lot. talking about my team. Oh, the, I feel okay. <laughs> uh, no, got I mean, him. The, the truth is 10-team leagues, yep. you're always going to have They're a lot of good. talent. So it's, ma it's a matter of getting the right guys who are going to hit, especially the later guys. You know, it's like. Um, if, if Jameson Williams hits, that's sure. huge. If, if JSN hits for you or Christian Watson, those, those are the, you're going to need to take shots in a league like this of guys that really come through. It's ironic that I have, I've got Jaden Reed and you've got Christian Watson. Right. I think one of those guys comes through in a major way and our teams will be really healthy for it, but it won't be both. Right. We did this mock draft on Sleeper, and if you didn't know, in addition to being the number one fantasy platform, Sleeper also has DFS picks. Download the app now and use code BALLERS to get a 100% deposit match. Terms and conditions apply. That's going to do it for Monday's show. A reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com. That's the only place you need to be to get ready for your draft, and we hope to see you in L.A. as Sleeper presents the Megala Show on August 24th. We made it through, Jay. I'm shutting it down. But guess what? We will see you tomorrow. Five shows a week. Yeah, baby. Make sure you subscribe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.